Welcome to episode two of the Retro Header Build-Off with Vibrant Performance. I'm holding a piece of metal, but today's actually all about 3D modeling, so let's head over to the computer with Jay and check that out. In the previous episode, you saw Jay scanning the Beams engine and the engine bay, and we've ended up with this. So we have the Celica up on screen. This is all the information that we got from uh, the engine bay from the Artec scanner. Uh, from there, I just transfer it over to SolidWorks, and it comes up as the same file just in SolidWorks that now I can grab surfaces from and let SolidWorks know where I'm going to build this header in space. Uh, so I'm going to go in, I'm going to make uh, planes and references and tell it what my envelope of workspace is. Okay. Once I do that, I can bring parts in from a parts tree that we have on the computer that tells us, you know, uh, we have this collector we're going to use, we're going to use this type of bend, and we're going to place it within this area, and it'll allow me to bring uh, the part to life. Okay. And then we're going to take it from there and transfer it to a, a jig table. Now, in order to properly make it on a jig table, we also need to make the parts that will support all the runners and the flanges in space to mimic uh, the Celica's engine bay. Right. Okay, so we're gonna take that file and I'll just fast forward a little bit and show you um, what that looks like when we're all said and done. Okay. And that looks like this. Ah. So now this is the end result. So what this is showing me is the jig table on the base. This is all the dots down here. And then we've got uh, these uh, jig parts here that are holding up the runners to tell me where they go. Uh, this is this purple piece here is telling me where this, the uh, collector is going to sit and so on and so forth. Now, in order to get to that, uh, we use a, a program called DesignWorks as a plug-in to SolidWorks to tell us, you know, where uh, the engine bay parts are. Okay, so this is taking all that scan information away mm -hmm. and picking up pla like planes and references and all this sort of thing. This tells me what my limitations are. Okay, and then I go in and find uh, common areas that I can, you know, these little holes here are where my flange sits. And then this rod here is the steering column. And that's my, my uh, tie rod shaft right. for, uh, you know, steering again to, to the tires. So all of these, like the surface is the frame rail. And yes. Those are all my limitations. So once I have that in place, after grabbing that information from the scan, mm -hmm. I can take that and make it all work with parts that we have from our catalog, okay? So this is how it's gonna look. It tells me exactly, you know, what parts I need to pull from stock to make your header. It tells me, you know, uh, these parts here are parts I'm gonna print on our 3D printer to say, this is where this runner's gotta go. Okay. And it's gonna go bolt into our jig table that we have over there. Right. Now, um, so this will take, you know, a couple nights to print. I'll get all that done. And in the meantime, though, while I'm waiting for that, we have to physically make this jig plate for the uh, position of the header, the header flange. Gotcha. Now, you might be thinking, well, where do I know to put all these runners and how do I calculate runner lengths and things like that? Mm -hmm. If you look closely, you can see in here uh, this grid pattern I've yeah. put in. And this tells me it's, I've put them, I've spaced them like an inch apart. Okay. And then it tells me, you know, how far out I can go and I can make them look nice and neat and also be the right runner length. So I've got the runner length at around 25 to 26 inches. I know that's a good runner length for a two liter engine on a four into one header. Okay. And it just tells me if I want to lengthen it out, it's easy to change and I can reference it and it's repeatable. Okay. Um, so from there, I got to make these parts. So I got to wait for the printer to finish and we can get them all over to the jig table after uh, we start making this first jig plate. So that's the next step, go make that jig plate? Yeah, you bet. All right, let's Yeah, do so it. Well, let's go down to uh, uh, Metal Supermarket and we'll take a look at what they have and uh, we'll see if we can get that ready today. <laughs> <laughs> Jay likes to rock and roll and he likes to go to Metal uh, super, Supermarket? Metal yeah, supermarket. Metal Supermarket. So this is just down the aisle, or just down the building from uh, where we have the Vibrant uh, Development Center. And I'm here, I'm gonna get some hot rolled half inch by four inch uh, for some of our jig pieces. So 
it's kind of a free-for-all. You walk back here, get what you need, you might find a scrap piece that's ideally sized, or we might have to have something cut. So we'll see what we can find, and uh, we'll just make a mad dash for it. Pay by the pound here, I think, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that might be 32 inches. Perfect. Seven. Cut that guy in half and we're there. Money. All right, let's Pay grab up. this. We'll go. This All is right, good. I'll grab these. Yep. Set. This is the self-explanatory part where Jay cuts the piece of metal that we just bought in half because we needed two 16-inch long pieces and we're gonna make that magically happen with this bandsaw that I'm coveting. I want to take it back to our place, but not gonna happen. So uh, we're gonna drill the holes in the Jig plate, is that what this is called? Yeah, this is our first uh, part of the jig plate. This is for the actual flange, uh, the head flange itself. Um, I've just grabbed some dimensions off of the SolidWorks file that tells me where to put the holes where the, uh, the head flange sits on the top plate of the jig. And we're gonna take the, the measurements I've got from say zero, zero, which is my starting point in the corner here of this plate, which is gonna be here. Yeah. And I'm gonna replicate my first hole by following what the dimensions are from SOLIDWORKS. Judge, I've just jotted them down on a piece of paper. Oh, I see. And I'm gonna find them on by moving the mill here right. manually and just, okay. it'll tell me where this these points are. Got so yeah. my first one is uh, X210. So I'm gonna go to, what is it, two, what, wrong way? Find 210, 10, okay. that's good enough. Yeah. And then I'm gonna go find 284, which I'm already on. Okay. So right here is gonna be my, gonna first, be my, hole. My first hole. So okay. drill the hole, yep. start the process over again, zero everything out, yep. and then do it again. Five of those and we're done. You gonna weld this thing up or what? I hope so, probably won't look great. It's not a showpiece. No, just, it's not. It's a tool, right? It's functional. Yeah, That's right. It's right. kind of like me. It's a, it's a workable tool, but it doesn't look that good. So we've got uh, all these holes placed where we need to, uh, according to what the model tells us. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, it's going to warp when you weld it because you're not fully clamping it down, which is true. Yeah. But we have the ability to measure it again with the arm, our CMM, okay. and then replace that in the model and just make our fine adjustment. Okay. So if, let's say by chance that this doesn't actually weld at 90 degrees, it welds at 89 or oh, you can, 88. Oh, I then see. I just go and remeasure it and adjust for that measurement in the model again. Gotcha. So that, that doesn't take very long, but okay. um, for making sure that you know you have a consistent production piece or accordance to a drawing that you give somebody on paper that just ensures that it's right. Got you. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna weld all these pieces in and then we can prop it up, place it on the table, and we got our first jig piece. Jig complete. It was an exhausting process for me. Jay did all the work. It's bolted the, the jig table now, Jay. What's the next step in the process? Yeah, so we've got everything on the jig table. Um, I'm just gonna be, uh, I got a bit of a waiting game going with uh, waiting for some printed uh, jig parts that you also saw in the model. So we're gonna wait for those to be finished up. They take about a day and a half to actually print, start to finish. And we'll put them on the table and then we can start rooting some pipe and get everything tacked together. That's a wrap on this episode. Next episode, we'll get to all that good stuff Jay was just talking about. We'll get to see some tubes being joined together. I'm pumped. Now that you've seen Jay's 3D model of our header, it's time for you guys to jump over to the Vibrant Performance Channel and see Aaron's non-3D, non-computer non assisted design work. Made up imaginary model, yeah, just something like that. Started we throwing just tubes in the engine Start day. putting metal together. He's old school. Got whales outside? <laughs> <laughs>